Welcome back everybody. This is Summer Noel with Little Lee and Rose and today we are going to do a basic wood grain tumbler. So I have all my supplies set out here for you guys. We're going to be using gloves. I've got my tumbler ready. The types of paint I'm going to use is going to be the white Rust-Oleum. I use the two-time uh, Ultra Cover flat white because it covers really, really well. Um, and then a matte clear enamel. I've got my uh, decal already printed out. I've got my epoxy A and B ready. I've got my three colors for my alcohol inks. Today we are gonna be using caramel, ginger, and espresso. Um, I have my paint for ap applying. I've got my popsicle stick and my medicine cup for uh, mixing my epoxy. And I've got my safety equipment, my uh, chemical vapor mask for when we work with the epoxy. Um, so this is the tumbler we're gonna work with today. Um, it's just a modern curve, it's beautiful. This, this cup looks super great when it's done with wood, uh, wood grain. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and prep this cup and get it ready. If you guys have not learned how to do a prep, prep a cup yet, jump back on my channel, look back in my videos, and I have a how to prep your cup and get it ready video. Um, I'm not going to go through it because it's just, I want to keep moving with this. And uh, so jump back and look at it if you haven't done it. We're going to use, I'm going to prep it and spray it with the white first. I'm not going to use the clear yet, but just the white paint and we will be right back. All right, we're back and we have the cup completely sprayed white. Um, when I spray paint for this, I'm very, very careful to do light mistings of spray paint because you don't want to get drips because you're not going to be covering this cup in glitter so you can't hide those drips. If you get drips from the paint, you're going to be able to see them through the wood grain. So I do about three coats, not about, I do three coats and I just do a very, very light misting, let it dry. It usually only takes about five, 10 minutes. Do another layer of light, uh, light misting then a third layer and it gets you to this point where it's nice and well coated and but there's zero drips you can see there's no drips on this cup okay so what we're going to do is we're going to start we're going to put i'm going to move the espresso out because we're not going to use that on this layer yet we're going to mainly work with the ginger and the caramel today um uh, not today but on this uh first step for this so what i'm going to do is um we are going to open the cap on that one we're going to pick this up and i make a pool on the bottom that way, I do the puddle on the bottom, that way I don't have to constantly reload my brush. I almost use that like a paint dauber um, that painters use um, to like reload their brushes. And you can see it's just as simple as this. Just brush, dab it from the top, and bring it down the cup. And you can see just from brushing, it's already starting to get a slightly wood grain look. And you just keep brushing this is again, just the basics of wood grain. We're gonna get, in the next video, we'll get a little more detailed and a little bit more crazy, but I want you guys to just see how to first establish your wood grain lines. And you don't have to be super strategic about it. Just all these little things that you do, just keep brushing it as it dries. It starts giving it that grainy look. And there we go. That is gorgeous, already starting out beautifully. And I'm going to turn the cup and keep going. See, I was able to do all that painting without having to reload my brush by hand. I just grab it off the top and keep going. Okay, I'm running out, so I'm going to fill the top back up. Now, I don't know if this is different than any other video that's out there. I've never actually watched a wood grain tumbler video. I just kind of made this up from seeing someone's wood grain tumbler, just assuming how, like thinking how would I do that and how would I achieve it and just kind of dove in. And this is what I've learned to be like the most basics um, of how to get to this point. And so that is why I'm showing you guys this. So I'm, if you've seen something else on another video, I don't know, I can't compare um, because I've never seen a video. <laughs> I am a self-taught tumbler maker with uh, the wood grain. So I'm just kind of filling in all the white spots. And then on the bottom, just brush across the bottom a few times. I scratched the paint just a little bit there. This paintbrush has something hard in it. And I, now I've learned I scratched it, but you won't see that because we're gonna be painting over this anyway. Okay, so there you go. So that is your first step. That is your first color that we've got on. I got it all over my wrist. I didn't want to wear my gloves because sometimes I have an issue with the gloves. Um, but um, so you can see we've got a basic wood grain. Even all these little 
you don't have to worry about all these little lines. They actually make it look more like wood. It's great, beautiful. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, gonna take this outside and I'm gonna coat it with my clear matte enamel. You wanna use matte because you want the next layer of uh, uh, inks to grab on really well. And if you use gloss, sometimes it doesn't grab as well or it glides too much. Um, so just keep in mind, you wanna use the matte clear enamel. I'm gonna do a full coating over this and protect this original color. If you try to just immediately do the next darker color on top of this light color, the alcohols react with each other and will actually lift this alcohol ink off. And as you move it, it will leave a white mark where you've put the new ink and then moved it and it will move this bottom ink. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but just trust me, you want to definitely do it. You wanna get your first layer on and then you wanna clear coat it with this to block um, this next layer of alcohol ink from moving the original uh, alcohol inks. Okay, so we are. I'm gonna spray paint this one and we'll be right back. So now the tumbler has the layer, the first layer of the light colored wood grain and a coat of clear uh, spray paint on it. And we are gonna add the dark color now. So we're gonna open this up. When you're working with your alcohol inks, as long as you're going from light color to dark color, you can use the same paintbrush, but you don't wanna go the other way. So if you do a dark color, you don't wanna go back and try to do a white because your ink will be saturated in here and it will affect it will, you won't be able to get that light effect again. So I'm gonna do kind of the same thing. I'm not gonna put as much because these are just gonna be fun little streaks of the darker color. I take it all the way to the bottom, but not, all, not every time, and just keep brushing it, getting a little more. And I do it heavier in some spots and lighter in others. Put some more on the top. And I just keep striping it. And sometimes I only go halfway. Sometimes I go all the way. So this is actually is a perfect example. You can see I did not get enough spray paint on the bottom. And see what I'm talking about when you lay the puddle? I d apparently did not spray the bottom well enough. I was really focused on the area I was gonna work with heavily, mainly knowing I'm gonna cover this up. Um, but you can see that when I put that other, it actually moved and removed that bottom color and now you have a white spot. So that's why you wanna spray paint in between layers. I learned that the hard way. Again, I, didn't, I just self-taught myself this. Um, technique so I learned the hard way about it moving when I was trying to do my inks and had to learn just to make sure there's a barrier layer with the um, spray paint because it's still wood grains just fine you just use the spray paint to keep it from being able to do that because you will really fight with it if you don't uh, spray paint it because it will constantly move and change your epox um, your alcohol ink Now I don't wanna cover up all the light. I wanna le let some light stay shining through, like through peeking through, because that's what's gonna add the beautiful texture to the cup and keep it from being just a flat one color. Even though one color is beautiful, you can stop with just the single color. You don't have to add all the extra colors. It's more like personal preference on what you like. So um, if you like it um, with the single color and the light color, that's gonna be more like an oak. That's fine, just stop there and, and you don't have to add all these extra layers. But what I wanna do today is walk you guys through doing all the different layers um, with these inks. Okay, so I really like the way this one's looking just like this. I don't wanna add any more of this color. I am gonna do another coat of seal spray and we're gonna come back and we're gonna work with the Espresso, which is the darkest color. All right, we've got the next coat of the matte clear enamel on there. Move that out of the way, it's all dry. You can see the two colors. And now we are gonna work with the Espresso. So the Espresso I'm gonna do a little different because I'm not gonna do a lot of it. I'm not gonna pull it up on the bottom like I normally do. I'm just gonna use my hand in this brush. I use the plate so I don't damage everything around me that, I'm, that this touches. Because you can see this is much darker. And I just rub it on. 
Now I use these brushes. I've never actually used anything else because these have always given me such a great texture and look with this wood grain that I've just stuck with this. I've never tried an actual bristle brush. I don't know if they work. These are also really cheap. Um, you can get these in the dollar store hardware department, kind of where they sell like the automotive like stuff. Um, and they're a dollar for a big old pack. You can also get them at Walmart and such things, but um, they're the cheapest to get them just at the dollar store. And so that way they're kind of disposable because they're so inexpensive and they work great. I mean, you just see, I'm just brushing it on and then just moving it. Got a lot on there that time, but that's okay. That's what's kind of makes it this beautiful thing is every cup comes up a little different and you just get this really cool effect from this wood. But you can see how the ink is really grabbing onto that matte finish um, coat and that's really good. You want it to, to hold on there. You don't want to, you want to slide, but not a ton. So I'm not gonna do any knots on this one. Again, this is all self-taught guys, so if you've seen it somewhere else different, sorry. Um, but I'm not gonna do any knots on this one because we're doing, this is just our basic, easy beginner one. Um, so that if somebody stumbles across, across one of these videos um, and has never worked with tumblers, they can easily follow it and not get too confused. But I will be doing my next one that we do together. I will be doing a more advanced techniques and doing uh, the, the knots and the layering and doing it all a really fun one. But I want to get this one out first so that if somebody's never done a wood grain, they can follow this tutorial first, learn the basics, and then come back and jump in with us when we do the more advanced stuff and be up to speed. Okay, so I wanna pull some down from the top instead of just all being pulled from the bottom. And you can see why I layer the different colors because you can still see a bunch of that really light coming through. I'm not covering up everything. I'm just covering up bits and pieces with each color. So you still get that light color coming through in different spots. So you have the three different colors coming and it looks so amazing. All right, so, and I will do a little bit on the bottom. But like I said, you're not gonna really see the bottom. Um, you'll see later on. Um, I put fun stuff on the bottom of my cup. Some people put their business information. I don't do that. Um, I feel like I'm pretty easy to find uh, out there in the world if somebody wants to reorder. Um, and usually they've ordered from me so that they um, know where I'm at. So I put something cute and fun. So you saw my decals earlier and while one of these was drying, I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, what do I want to put on the bottom? And I realized I do want to put, I was going to leave it wood grain, but I, since I made that funny little thing on the bottom and I normally do this anyway, I made a cute decal that says eat, sleep, hunt. And that's going to go right on the bottom. So when they're drinking and they lift it, everyone reads the bottom and it says eat, sleep, hunt. Because it goes really well with the other decal I made. That's the hunting, the, the deer hunting and the fishing and this will be on the bottom. So it's just something kind of fun. I usually don't tell the person who's buying it that I put something fun on the bottom. It's always just a little surprise and everyone kind of loves it and it's a fun thing. But you, everybody do it how you want. If you want a wood grain the bottom, obviously make sure you spray the bottom better than I did on this one. Um, I was so focused here, I forgot to do the bottom on the one round. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cup and I'm gonna clear coat spray it again and then let it dry and we will be back and I will show you how to epoxy this cup. So while that cup is drying on that round, I'm gonna show you, I'm usually try to think of some little tip or trick that I know about a certain field or area in this specific type of tumbler that I've learned while I'm doing these. And this is gonna be my tip or trick for this one while we're waiting for that one to dry. So alcohol inks are amazing. They do beautiful wood grains, but you will notice when you get in to this, you will find some of these w colors that are like the wood colors that you would use when you put this clear coat over the top and every brand does it. I have, I have tried every different brand of um, spray paint. They all do it where they turn it green. It's not the spray paint. It is the alcohol ink itself. So before you dive in and do a whole cup with an alcohol ink, do a test strip. So what I do is I take a piece of paper and I spray paint it white and then I put a little tiny, tiny bit of each color of my alcohol on it just, bef just before I start a cup. Well, I now know mine are safe, but I know that this one specifically, I saved it so I could show it to you guys in this video, will turn green. So this one is called Latte. Avoid this color. It comes in a pack of three, so you really can't if you want to get the other two colors. Just don't use it on your cup, but you'll see what I mean here in a second. I'm going to compare it to, let's say, 
uh, let's do ginger. Um, I don't want to do too many because I don't want to confuse you in here, but um, you just put a little, a little strip down. And then I don't recommend doing this inside, guys. My workspace is um, super well ventilated. I have a whole house fan in here um, so that I can turn it on when I'm epoxying and stuff and spray painting. So I'm just going to do a juice. You normally go outside and do this, okay? I'm just doing it so you can see it on camera. And you can immediately see how that one turned green. I'm going to hold it up a little closer. So this ginger, so this is also what you want to do is also let it dry because the ginger will turn green under when it's wet, but it, I let it dry and I was surprised. I was like, oh no, I have to throw away too. But when I let it dry, this one still stays green and this one actually goes back as it's drying to the original ginger color. So you can actually still use this one even though when you first hit it with the spray paint, it looks green. But you can see this latte colored one, it's not going back to its original Trying to get this one to dry faster so you can see it going back to the brown. But this one stays green. So if you do it on your cup, if you use the latte on your cup, it's going to have a green tint to it. Which, I mean, if you want to try to get a mossy look or something like that, maybe that would work for you. Um, but it, it's, I, I just highly advise test stripping like this so you know what colors you're going to get with is your end result for your cup. Um, I'm going to grab a cup that turned green on me, and I will show you guys. Give me just a okay, second. Okay, guys, we're at the stage where we're going to um, layer it with the epoxy to make it ready to lay a decal on it. Um, it has the coat of clear coat spray on it. You definitely want to make sure you spray a clear coat over your alcohol ink before you epoxy, because if you forget that step, the epoxy will smear all that color around, and it will lose the uh, wood grain look. Um, so this one has a really good solid coat of clear coat. I made sure I did the bottom really well. Um, so I've already got my nitrile gloves on. We're working with the epoxy. Um, here's part A and part B. I'm going to mix equal parts. You only need two mLs. Very small, very, very small amount. So I'm a hairstylist. I've been a hairstylist for uh, more than half my life. Um, and so I'm really good at eyeballing, but if you don't eyeball and you don't aren't good at measuring out with just your eyes, I highly recommend getting a kitchen scale and scaling out in grams. Okay. So you just need a tiny, tiny bit. You see here on these cups, um, these, if you use these Mexican cups to mix the very bottom line says 2.5. I don't know if you guys can see that or if it's focused in well, but it says 2.5. When I mix my epoxy doesn't even come to that line. So we are using less than 2.5 mLs of epoxy okay so if you need to it's very hard to get um measure these small amounts unless you have a kitchen scale or you're really good at eyeballing before we mix you want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area and you're wearing your uh safety gear this is my vapor mask i'm going to get a little muffled while i'm talking with this on but i wear it because i want to live a long life for my babies and this stuff is very toxic for you to breathe but it is safe to work with you just need to make sure you're wearing your chemical mask okay so i've got my mask on I'm gonna talk a little louder. Um, I'm actually hearing impaired, so sometimes I get too loud. Sorry guys, you might have to adjust your mirror, uh, sound. And so what we're gonna do is when you buy epoxy, if you've never bought epoxy before, you can get it in any craft store. Use your coupons for like Michael's or Hobby Lobby and get the, it's called Amazing Clear Cast there. I use Pro Marine, I love Pro Marine. Um, and this is part A and part B. You're gonna mix part A and part B. Like I said, if you need to scale it, to, you need it exactly the same amounts. So if you need a scale so you can measure the exact amounts, please use a scale. I don't have I don't have a scale today because I again, like I said, I've done so many eyeballings my entire career that I can hit it almost dead on every single time, no matter what measurement I'm doing, high or big or low. So I have not had a problem. I've never once had a problem with my epoxy uh, being taxi, tacky, mainly because I my eyeballs can just uh, tell exactly how much is exact. So you can see in this cup, there's even space left. It's not even filling the entire bottom of the cup. So it is a tiny, tiny amount of epoxy. And you want to mix it really, really well. You don't want to have, you want to make sure A and B are swirled together really, really well to the point I even scrape the popsicle stick to make sure even the little bits that are on the popsicle stick get mixed in. Because if you have any area that doesn't get mixed A to B, uh, it won't cure. It'll leave a soft spot, okay? So then we're going to hang this cup up and I'm going to do the hang method epoxy. I'm going to zing through this part for you guys. Um, but if you have, and so you, if you have not seen me do a hang method epoxy before, go back in my channel and find hang method and follow along for that one for this stage. I'm going to zip through this on time-lapse. 
Uh, for everybody who's done it a million times and has been through the hang method with me before, I uh, don't want to waste everyone's time. All right, so jump over back and watch the hang method video if, you're, if you've not done it yet. If not, just follow along. Okay, I hope you guys were able to get from that. I just did a little speed up so you guys can still watch me do it, but not tediously wait for, you know, 15 minutes when I apply this. Um, I do this really quick. Most of you on your first time or so, it's going to take you a little longer than what it takes me um, uh, because I'm, I've done so many of these. Uh, I've actually got more in my shop that I'm going to be doing immediately after finishing this film. So now this will sit here for 24 hours. Well, probably, well... It doesn't need 24 hours. I would say 12 hours before you can start the next step. Most likely it'll be 24 before I can get back to it. Um, but we will let this cure and dry up and we will come back and do the next steps. All right, guys. Oh, here, let me show you how shiny it is. So when you have the epoxy on, you can see it just gets super shiny. That's going to give it a really glossy coat and just really make it start pop. All right, so that's what it looks like. I'm all epoxied. It's gorgeous. All right, we're going to let this sit, and we'll be back. So we're back, and this cup now has two layers of hang method on it. I did one layer, let it cure. did a second layer, let it cure. I wanted to get a really nice, smooth base, and even though one layer is good, I was a little concerned that um, it was so thin on the first round that I did uh, because I actually used even less epoxy than I normally do. I, I just, just to make sure I added a second layer so that I make sure that the decal doesn't lift up the, uh, uh, any of the epoxy or any of the uh, alcohol inks. So when you're doing a really big decal like this, I want this to really take up a lot of the space on this cup. I put slices in my, not actually through the actual decal itself, but I will do this and make it so that I can move the, the decal around as much as I can, if I need to, as I go over that curve. So I put little slits through it, so it makes it almost, you'll see as I start applying that I need those little slits to make this wrap onto this cup around the curve as best as I can get it. Okay, so all these little slits are gonna help it bend and move while I'm doing it. Makes it a little tricky to remove it, but you just gotta be a little careful. Okay, so when I do my decals, I press from the middle in. So I kind of line it up, make sure it's straight, and start in the middle, and then I do one side at a time. So I'm gonna lay this down, let that curve. So you can see right here it rippled. That means that, that the slices right there were perfect and allowed that to lay down smooth without a ripple. Without a ripple in the vinyl, sorry. It rippled and crossed over. Uh, I'll see if I can get one to do it real well. And it might be something so minor, but it will save the shape of your vinyl. So if you look, well, it's really hard to see. If you look here, this vinyl overlaps this vinyl, which means it bent a little bit to make this lay flat here. So that is why you cut, because if you didn't do that, you're probably gonna have a ripple in your actual vinyl from trying to move it too much and crease it over that lump. All right, so we're gonna rub it all down, make sure it's attached really well. You wanna make sure attached, your uh, vinyls are attached really well so they don't lift up with epoxy because if they're not attached, the epoxy will get underneath and lift it up. All right, so there we're gonna hook an edge of this. Transfer tape. I'm not doing this pretty, guys. With all those slits in the vinyl, it makes it a little harder to lift it off. It doesn't just come in one piece, but that's okay. It doesn't hurt the vinyl at all, and it just makes your life a little bit easier. Okay, so there we go. It's very, very beautiful. Okay, so that, and that stands out right really nice, the black. I was going to do more of a white, but I, I was, it's kind of a man's cup, and I wanted to keep it more masculine and stuck with the black. Okay, so now what I do is I stick this one on the bottom and I assume that when they're drinking, they drink from this way and they lift up. So then I match that so when they're drinking that way that this little sticker is on the bottom so when they lift it up, it shows this cute thing and it's not upside down. So I just, I look down the side of the cup. So see, I line this and I know that's right there. And I line this and this was gonna hide the, um, the little scratch I put in the bottom. And it will also uh, 
hide that little, um, where the alcohol inks rubbed away a little bit. And I just make sure it's really well on there and then peel it up. And so it says, eat, sleep, hunt on the bottom and it has the cute decal on top. Now these sell like gangbusters at um, events. They sell really well on Etsy as well, but when you have these on your table at um, like craft fairs or like street fairs or fest festivals, this thing will sell, these sell faster than any other cup, even over my bumblebees and everything. This, this wood grain draws people in, they love it. Okay, so we are gonna get on to the next step and keep on moving with this cup. So we've got the cup on the turner. It is already turning. I've got my epoxy mixed A and B. So here's my epoxy A and B. I use two gallon jugs. So I use these uh, condiment bottles to put them in these smaller, easy to control uh, dispensers uh, so that it's easy to get the smallest amount out. So on these cups, here, let me see, I have one off the side here. On these cups, if you've never done this before, these little medicine cups have measurements for milliliters, mLs. So what I do is for part A, I just fill this up slowly until it gets to the 7.5. Then I take my part B and I fill it up to the 15. That means it's equal parts. So seven and a half and seven and a half of each part and I mix it. My rule of thumb for how much epoxy you need, if it's a 30 ounce cup, you're gonna need 15 ounces of epoxy. If it's a 20 ounce cup, it's 10. So it's half, whatever the uh, uh, size of the cup is, it's half that for milliliters of, and then equal parts. So if it's a 30 ounce cup, you want 15 milliliters, seven and a half and seven and a half. Seven and a half of A, seven and a half of B, that makes 15 milliliters. All right, so I've got my nitrile gloves on. I'm wearing my chemical mask. You wanna wear a vapor mask for your health and safety. I've got my torch on hand to pop bubbles once we get it all applied. I just stir furiously. I don't worry about bubbles because my torch takes care of all my bubbles. And we're just gonna go ahead and apply. I'm gonna stop and speed this up for you guys because you don't need to watch this tediously as I apply it. All right, so I just got all the epoxy applied. And if you watch that part of the video, you'd see where every once in a while I'm rubbing the cup furiously. So you can see when you're applying your epoxy if there's a spot that's repelling the epoxy. Um, I haven't figured out what that is because I never wash my hands. I touch my cups like crazy. Everyone says, oh, you're oily hands. That's not what does that. There's something about something in the environment alone that has nothing to do with our hands because otherwise this cup, I've touched this cup all over with my hands and it should be repelling everywhere. It shouldn't even be taking the epoxy if that was the case. But just every once in a while, there's a spot that won't take the epoxy. And I've learned just randomly, if you just take your finger, let's, I, there's not any more spots. I'm just rubbing it now just for good measure. But um, you saw in the video where every once in a while there would be like a spot, like a tiny, tiny like pinhole. And I just rub it real good. And for some reason that stops it. So if you see anywhere where the epoxy is trying not to grab and repelling away from, just rub that area like this. I mean, I'm, I'm not even rubbing on anything, guys. I'm just kind of showing you what I do. And I rub on that area. And the next time it comes around, the epoxy, like right here, was one of those spots. It was right on the um, vinyl somewhere on the fishing pole. And there was, it was trying to repel off this part of the fishing pole. There's a t there was a pin right there. So it was this little spot of this fishing pole had no epoxy. So I just rub, 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 rubbed it. And now it's covered. So I don't know why that works or what it is. But it is what it is, and I accept it. And you guys got to see me do the torch real quick. So now this one is going to sit over, and the torch is to pop all those little micro bubbles because I stir so furiously with my epoxy. I don't want to waste time, like 20 minutes. Uh, let's see, you just go very quickly with your torch. You can use a lighter, but a kitchen torch is so much easier to use than a lighter. So now that's what I use on a real basis. All right, guys, this cup is going to spin to completion. It should probably only need this one layer of epoxy, maybe two, I'll check, um, to make sure the vinyl is very well covered. But uh, we will come back when this is cured and we'll make a decision then and we'll keep on moving. Uh, and we will, well, yeah, that's it. I mean, you can see a little glitter contamination right here where my kids got in here goofing around and got a little glitter on the sucker, but it's beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna 
uh, jump in. We're going to let this cure and we'll jump in with the next step. Here it is, the finished product. This cup came out gorgeous. You can see all the different grains in it um, that look like tree uh, grains of a tree bark from all the different layering of all the different colors. And it just is stunning. And there's the fun little thing on the bottom, the Eat, Sleep, Hunt. Um, this one I'm going to mail out to my brother-in-law. He's going to love it. Um, I'm sure he knows it's coming because my mother-in-law knows about it. So I'm pretty sure she whispered in his ear that he's getting a really cool gift. Um, but this is um, a finished cup. It's super easy. So this was your basics of wood grain. Um, so keep an eye out. If you like this video, definitely subscribe. And if you want to keep up to date on what we're doing, click that little bell that will give you notifications of every time I release a video because this was our basics tutorial. And next I'm going to be releasing, um, the advanced version and you're going to love that one guys. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's even more impressive than this one, even though this one's absolutely gorgeous. We're just going to take it to the next level with this, the, the next tutorial. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned some, I hope I made this easy and clear to follow. And I look forward to seeing what you guys create tag me out there when you make stuff and you're inspired by what I do I love to see your guys's creations um, some people make comments about not wanting to copy me exact but feel free I put this out there so that you are welcome to do it exactly how I like step by step um, jump in there make some stuff and make some money guys have fun see you on the next video